ask questions in class. Have a good day. We are on day two on our next unit, unit three. So this is day two slope. So make sure you get those notes out and fill in the information. So slope of a line, it is the steepness of a line. Okay, so think about if you were getting a job and you were being paid $5 an hour compared to if you're getting a job and you're getting paid $20 an hour. $20 would show a way more steepness on a graph. Okay, so the steepness of a graph is what we're talking about. So M, M is the variable that represents slope, okay, which also is known as rise over run. All right which you could also put y over x. And then let's write down the slope formula. So it's the difference of y's over the difference of x's. So when given two points, we're going to find the difference of y's over the difference in x's. Now be really careful on what, what order you have this in. So if you notice, both of my twos are first. So my second point is first, and my first point is the second one. So for some people, it, it helps to make arrows. So y2 minus y1 on top, and x2 minus x1 on top. So you want to make sure you have the same order as up there. So that's why people use the arrows or write down that slope formula. So you're finding the difference of the y's over the x's, okay? So let's start with the first slope. So this is our first slope of a, okay? And I want to find two points on there, okay? So here's a point and here's a point. And I'm gonna go from the bottom one to the top one. By rising, I'm going up the y values and then running to the next value. So I need to see how many units up did I go. I went one, two units up, and then how many over? One, two, three, four. I went four over, okay? So if you notice, based on my formula, I'm going to do two over four, and that reduces to one half, okay? So my m equals one half. All right, now let's work on my second value. So I want you to try out B. So try B out. That's how we get better at things, by trying things out and seeing how they go. So finding a point and finding the next point, then rising and running. All right, so I went up to, I rose two, and I ran one. But look at which direction I went. I went left. That means it's a negative slope, okay? So m equals negative 2 over 1, or m equals negative 2, knowing that it has to be over 1 in order to go over 1 unit, okay? So knowing which way did I rise and which way did I run. So if I rise and I run to the right, I have a positive slope. If I rise and run to the left, I will have a negative slope. Okay, so some people know who this is, some people don't. This is Slope Dude. I will attach the video to Slope Dude in my description of this video. So Slope Dude is a skier, just like we have people skiing and coming to Lake Tahoe and skiing all the time. Hopefully we get some snow this winter. So when he, when he is going up the hill, that is a positive slope from left to right going up the hill left to right, and then going nice negative, going down the hill, okay, that's a negative slope. As you can see, it's rise and run to the right, or rise and run to the left, okay, zero fun slope. A zero fun slope means it's just a flat slope. So your, your actual slope is going to be zero. So you would see something like y equals five when you had a zero slope. You notice there's no x and there's no coefficient for x for that one. And undefined, oh my gosh, the skier falls off the cliff undefined, okay? Undefined is different than zero fun, okay? An undefined slope is if you got m equals 5 over 0. Well, your calculator will say you can't do that, therefore it's an undefined slope. A slope like that would be like x equals 5. There's no y-intercept, and 
that's an undefined slope. This, the actual line is going up and down. So knowing the difference between the four different slopes will be definitely helpful. All right, so now let's use our formula to answer number three. So again, I'm going to write it down. Y2 minus Y1. I'm going to add some color. And then X2 minus X1. Okay, so that's the main thing how people make mistakes, guys, is by writing, by having it in a different order. Okay, so let's say that A is my first point. A is my first point, so I'm going to put X1, Y1. And for my second point, I have X2, Y2. Now I'm going to plug it in to this formula. Okay, so Y2 is negative 4. Y1. Y1 is 2. Okay. What's in between a subtraction sign? We're finding the difference. How do I get from one point to another? I find the difference. Okay. X2 is 0 minus 3. Okay. So let's make sure that we have it. So our Y's are on top negative 4 and 2, okay, and my x's are on the bottom, 0 and 3. Now I'm going to find the difference. So negative 4 minus 2 would be negative 6 over 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Now when I divide two negatives, I get a positive 2, okay, so m equals 2 in this slope. So if I was graphing that, I would go up 2 and over 1 to the right because it is a positive slope. Okay, so if there's nothing under the number, you need to remember that it's a 1 when you're graphing it. All right, let's try the next ones. So there's a few ways you can do this. So I'm going to show you both ways for number 4, and then you are going to try number, um, you're going to try 5, and then we'll just say that this is 6 or A. Okay, so let's try number 4 by doing both steps. Again, I like to write the formula. You're going to have to get used to using lots of formulas in algebra and in your math classes in the future. So get used to it. All right, so X1, Y1. And then again, I can use a different color if it helps me. X2, Y2. And let's write down that formula. So I have negative 3 and 1. I have 1 and negative 5. And then remember, there's a subtraction sign in between. Subtraction sign in between because we're finding the difference. Thank you. All right, so I have negative 4 over 6. And now I need to reduce that to negative 2 thirds. All right, now that's one way to do it. You can also, if it helps you, say, okay, negative 3 minus 1, which is the top, y's on top, and then the x is on bottom. I want to make sure I go from x to x, 1 minus a negative 5. All right, the other way to do this is to graph the actual points. So negative 5, 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 1. So that is point P. And then Q is 1, negative 3, so over 1, down 3, 1, 2, 3. That's Q. I can put them together. Whoop. And now I rise over run. I need to find the next point on there. So using graph paper would definitely benefit. But you have your notes. Fill out your notes, please. All right, so now let's see if this works. I went, I rose 2. And I ran 3. I ran to the left. So that means negative. So negative 2 thirds. Again, that negative is for the entire fraction. I still went up 2 and I went left 3. Okay, now I want you guys to try 5 and 6. You want to use the formula and you want to graph them. Okay, so do both please. All right, so let's see that you got the same as me. Okay, so number five, think about slope, dude. So number five, you should have gotten a zero slope, a zero slope for number five, okay? So 
I had three minus three, which is zero. The y's are on top. And when I graphed it, okay, if I graph it, I notice, so over, negative one, up three, one, two, three, and over four, one, two, three, four, up three, one, two, three, zero fun, like slope do says, it is a horizontal line, which means it's a zero slope, okay? Compared to number six, or A, as it says on your notes, it, it was two over zero. That is different. If you put that in the calculator, your calculator is going to say error. Why? Because it's an undefined slope, okay? So it's an up and down. It's a, it's a vertical line going straight up and down, so that makes a zero slope. All right, so we have two more questions. So these are real life situations. Let's talk about them. So here's the real life situations. Let's talk about them and move on. All right, in 2001, a survey of Reno High School students showed that 10, 1,020 students attend at least one sporting event. In 2011, a similar sh survey showed that 1,400 students had attended at least one sporting event. All right, they increased. So let's say that year 2001 is year zero. And there was 10, 20, okay? So the input and the output. And then in 2011, there was 1,400 students. So what year was that? That was 10 years later. And now let's establish and create a slope so then we can figure out the rate, okay? So the rate of change is another fancy word for slope. So if you ever see a rate of change, that's what they're asking. So 1,400 minus 1020 over 10 minus 0. Okay, so let's solve that. So we have our two points. We're going to find the slope of those two points. We found the two points. We solved by putting the y values subtracting those over the x values and figuring out that it's 38. The rate of increase is 38. All right, let's look at the second one. Number seven, a student graphed the line 6x plus y equals 8. If she substitutes the number 3 and for the number 8 in the equation, how will the graph of the line change? Okay, so let's get y by itself first, okay? So I have 6x plus y equals 8. I need to get the 6x to the other side. And I have y equals negative 6x plus 8. Okay. So looking at this graph, my negative 6 is the slope. And my 8 is known as the y-intercept, also known as the starting point. Okay. So looking at the equation, if I substitute the number 3 and for the number 8, so y equals negative 6x plus 3, so the slope doesn't change, but the y-intercept does. It changes to 3. So did the, did the slope change? No, the slope did not change. So it did not rise less steeply or more steeply. It's either A or B. So going from 8 to 3, it went shifted down 5. So the answer would be B. So thanks for joining me on, on slope. Now